The red eye, red tail puffer. What a these good can... first bag. Yeah, wow, this can't. So when I ordered these earlier in the year, they were like. All right, so I don't have any B-roll for these guys, so we're gonna have to go down to the shop. Hopefully they're on the floor so we get a good shot of them. These guys are pretty rare. Never really seen them in the shop. I don't think so. Yeah, let's go down there. Caitlin here. Hello. Um, we're gonna go take a look at this rare, rare puffer that we got. And want to lead the way? Sure thing. All right. What are these guys? These are the red tail, red eye dwarf puffers. They actually come from Indonesia. These guys are actually kind of uncommon, so I'm excited that we have them in the shop. I've never seen them before. Um, I don't think many people actually have. So she's gonna start catching them, and then yes. we'll. Go ahead and bring them out to the floor. So you can catch puffers in a couple different ways. I don't bring them up um, to the air, so I don't want them to puff up with all that air and get it stuck in them. So I kind of like hurt them with the net, and then I go in there with a container. Yeah, with uh, with Lady Bird at home, we put her in a, a trash can. There we go. That's one. Are you going to get all three or just one at a time? I'm just going to do one. OK, let's go. Looks like the little female. There she one. is. Let's go and do the other two and then we'll start getting some B-roll. So what else can you tell me about them? So these guys get about two inches big. So I think that big male that we have in the back, I'm gonna try and get him. I think he's about as big as they're gonna get. Um, as you saw, they're definitely a little territorial. We had that male kind of nipping on the female just a little bit earlier. Yeah, they look very evil to begin with. They got those big red eyes. This guy was always looking this dark when uh, we unboxed them. <laughs> Get in there. He does not want to switch. A little so less water what, what, for this guy. what do they usually eat? What's their diet? Do so you know? these guys, the same thing as several other puffers. They're uh, they actually don't have teeth. They have a jaw that has like these bone structures coming up, and it's in four different sections. If you've ever seen Murphy's teeth, he has like two, kind of like this, and two like this, like a beak. These guys are actually kind of the same. So their teeth are their teeth are gonna grow and you kinda need to keep them filed down or their teeth will grow so far up that they can't open their jaws and they'll starve. So you wanna give them something crunchy. Okay. Um, crabs, snails, krill, anything like that to keep them filed down. You can supplement their diet with blood worms and really anything else that they'll eat for you. Kind of on the side. There you go. All right, let's go. But from what I heard about these guys, you can keep them with other small kind of dithery fish, like a smaller rasbora. Um, something that's fast enough to stay away from them, but small enough to not really get their attention, so they don't really feel the need to get too territorial with them. <laughs> I think if you were looking to keep these guys, you would probably want to do a group of them in a something like a 29 gallon. You could probably do one in a 20 long. Um, if you're doing like more than three, you'll probably want like a 40 breeder. Um, supposedly the males are the ones that get the most territorial. So the more problems that people have with them, it, it tends to be with the males actually. Okay. This is the most colorful one of them all. So this is a pretty guy. Let's go put him in the tank and see what he looks like. I think the females end up uh, kind of similar to the pea puffers with a little bit more spots going on their body. So they have like all those little dots. It looks like someone kind of like dabbed them with a, a pencil a bunch. That's another sign that it's a female. Um, you do want a heavily planted tank for these guys, something that's going to really keep them interested that they can investigate in. Um, so you have like the java on the java fern on wood right there, and that's going to kind of give them a point to kind of hide around, keep interested in, investigate. With puffers, the more planted the tank, the better. They're really curious creatures, and they definitely want to swim around, investigate. They'll go through anything they can fit in, try and figure out what's going on. So they're checking out the Zeiss filter right now. <laughs> they do not know what that is. 
Yeah, the male's really pretty in there right now. All At least right. that bigger one. Since I have you here, do you want to talk about any other puffers? Um, I can show you the pea puffers. Let's go. So these are the pea puffers that we have in the shop right now. Um, they're super cute, super adorable. They're kind of like, I call them the gateway puffer. Um, most people come in the shop, they see Murphy, and they're like, I want to keep that. And usually I kind of direct them this way. Um, they're one of my favorite puffers just because they're, they're much easier to keep than the other ones. So these guys, they don't have the whole teeth growing business. So you can feed them basically whatever they'll eat. Black worms, frozen blood worms are uh, their favorite in my experience. These guys have actually been kind of picking at the viber bites a little bit. I fed them earlier today, so some of them have those really big bellies. That's something you want to look for when you buy them. Make sure you're getting a puffer that's eating, um, a puffer that's healthy, and obviously has some good coloration. Um, these ones with the super big bellies are kind of what you would look for, something that's rounded out, not hollowed. And you don't really want lumpy either. That's usually a sign that there could be some internal parasites in there. So their stomach is like kind of bumpy in different ways. Oh, okay. That's a good tip. But uh, really easy to care for. You can put one of these guys in a five gallon. If you want to do a group, I would suggest like if you want to do say like a trio of them, like three, do two females and a male. The males tend to be a little bit more nippier, at least in my experience. And how would you, you know, sex them? Uh, it's it's super hard in shop. They uh, they kind of naturally camouflage themselves, so they're hard to sex in the shop. But once you get them home, it's super easy to tell. Uh, they get like these blue, let me see if I can find one who has One gets like super, super spotty, right? The females like are the ones that get the spots. Yeah, so I they, noticed that. It looks like someone, like I said, took a pencil and kind of like yep. just bopped them all over the place. And the male doesn't have that at all. No, the males also get like those blue kind of like gill markings. Uh, looks like kind of a blue zigzag going down their side. Mm -hmm. Maybe like that guy right there. I see like kind of a blue sheen. Um, the males also will get that solid stripe going down their belly. So from their chin all the way down, it'll be like kind of a darker brown, black stripe. So you kind of got to watch them in the shop, see what they're doing. If there's one that swims up to the glass and is kind of like saying hello to you, that's definitely the one I take home. It's going to be the one that's most interesting at home for you guys. Yep, that goes um, about with any fish really, right? Yeah. yeah. If there's a fish that's active, swims up to the glass, it looks lively, um, the eyes aren't clouded, the skin looks good, that's the one you want to get. All right, okay. Caitlin, thank you so much for all your help. Yeah. That was really good. I'm trying not to fall this time. All right, people. I got Nick here. Hello. Hey, where did you go? <laughs> All right, we're here in front of the Amazon Puffers, another puffer tank. I don't know a lot about these guys, but except for they come from Peru. And um, Dean's caught a few of them once he was down there. And um, that's all I can say. We'll take it over to Nick and right. see what he can tell us about them. Yeah, they're kind of like a cool, like I would say, not quite entry level, but probably intermediate puffer. Uh, I think the only thing that kind of sets them aside from some of the smaller ones, like the pea puffers or some of the other kind of oddball, weird small ones, uh, would be like the teeth issues. Um, so they're not for everybody, but they're kind of cool. You can keep them like a 29. They're kind of like, think of like a small lime swimming around in your tank when they're like full size. Um, and a 29 would be good for like one. Uh, so you wouldn't want to do, you either want to do like one or you want to do like a group of six or more is what I've heard. Um, and it's kind of like 50-50 on how they do with other fish. You know, each one's a little bit different. Uh, my overall like personal experience with them in the shop as I've never kept them, you know, in my home aquariums uh, is that they usually do okay with like other kind of similar sized stuff. Uh, so I know that like in the past we've had them with, you know, small black ghost knife fish. Uh, we had them with the emperor tetras in the past and they got along in there just fine. Uh, so I think if you're doing like smaller or kind of medium sized schooling fish with them, they should be just fine. Uh, I know they like kind of neutral hard water. Uh, I would say probably looking at like a pH like 7.72, um, you know, KH ratings kind of upper, you know, maybe 100, 180 kind of around in there. Uh, and that's just for the teeth growth. Uh, you'll want to make sure you feed them pretty like shellfish heavy diet, I would say. When they're little like this, you could probably do a bunch of like ram's horn snails or other small pond snails, pest snails, things like that. And then as they get a little bit bigger, I've seen people use like frozen krill. Um, they don't you know, get that, that much bigger, right? No, not a whole lot bigger than this. Like they get plumper. Uh, the biggest one I ever saw was maybe like that. You know, they, they want some open swimming space, so I definitely make sure that you're not, you know, super heavily planted, but planted enough, like you, you know, so your own will. But I would say just make sure they have some swimming space up front. You know, let them let them hang out. I don't you don't want to cramp them in there. Whoa. Don't fall. All <laughs> right, what do we got? Right. This is our little Shodenai guy. Uh, so they're, 
other name is they call them like the dwarf spotted Congo puffer. Um, kind of think of them as like a mini Murphy, uh, just kind of fun size package. Um, so I know that they're in the same family, which most puffers are in that like Tetradon genus. Um, these guys come from the Congo River Basin in Africa, kind of similar to the Mubus, a little bit of a different area, I believe. Um, but just think of them kind of fun size. So they're going to get about as big as like a Three Musketeers bar. So you're looking at like three and a half to four inches at the very most, but I think more on average, probably like three, three and a half inches. I would say pretty easy, you know, to get into. Like it would definitely be easier to start with something like this than I think it would personally to do like an Amazon, just because you don't really have to worry about the teeth issues quite as much. Um, the teeth are very similar to Murphy, so you'll still want to feed them like a diet of shellfish or snails or clams, um, but it's it's not as detrimental. Uh, as like it is with the with the with the Amazons like I would say something like this is definitely more approachable uh, to like a day-to-day -day consumer so at 199 it's just not just oh I'm just gonna go buy this oh yeah win. this is definitely a commitment uh, so it's it's a fish you're probably gonna be having for quite a while too I know that there's you know there's more info on them every day online but um, I would assume that they would probably make it for you know at least five or six years, um, probably longer. Most puffers, you know, like the bigger guys, I know they they can kick around for like over you know a dozen years or so. Um, and as you can see here, I would say like one of the most ideal companions would be like kind of a broader body tetra, like the phantoms in here. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, like something that you know has some depth to it. Either these or maybe like the serpe tetras would be a good one. Uh, I think it's you know it's not distracting from him, but it's also you know something else cool to kind of look at. You know, it's not just your neon tetra swimming around in there. Uh, but I would say kind of set it up like that. Uh, these guys actually do really well in like a very densely planted tank. Everybody that I've seen in the shop since we've been you know kind of moving these through more frequently. A lot of the customer pictures I'm seeing are, you know, very heavily planted. These guys love to kind of hang up in some java fern or like some tall spindly stuff. Uh, they just kind of like to hunker down in there. They like to find their little areas. Okay, let's yeah. put these ladders back and then we'll <laughs> proceed to our last puffer. Yeah. All right. All right, you guys know what time it is. Oh yeah, Murphy time. <laughs> All right, tell me about Murphy and all your right. experience with him so far. You yeah. don't have to tell me like, you know, his water parameters, yeah. all that stuff. No worries. But yeah, Murphy is definitely kind of the pride of the shop. Uh, I would say that in my personal experience, since I've kind of been working here, um, he's definitely, this is a pet. This is this is Corey's baby. Um, so I know that he, he, you know, definitely he's pampered in here. Um, I, I would say he's really cool. Like I love the independent eye movement, the giant chompers, you know, kids love him. I'd say there's not a kid that comes in the store that doesn't just like automatically get drawn to him. I mean, look at that, he just crunches that up, no problem. Um, so I'd say they're definitely a personality. I know they're super, super smart. So he recognizes us, you know, when, when it comes to seeing us through the glass. Uh, like it's one of those things where he comes running to us. Like if a, if a customer walks in front of here, yeah, he'll come check them out. But it's a totally different game when, you know, and I, if I walk around here versus a customer, he's gonna come smashing that glass because he yep, knows that I'm gonna see all the, these oh, are yeah. all the teeth marks. Yeah, he's gotten he cockier as he's gotten a little bit bigger. Like he, I feel like he kind of knows now that if he slams into the glass or if he scrapes his teeth, that he's gonna get something. exactly the only way that he he knows we're gonna get him to stop is by feeding him. So I think he's kind of he's training us in a way. Um, but he's definitely he's he's a he's a he's a bundle of love. He's a super cool fish. I know that it's super fun to kind of watch his eyes turn forward when he focuses on something. Um, and I know he's still got a little bit of, of meat to get on him. He'll get a little bit bigger, I believe. Um, but definitely, he's so fun. He's definitely something that you know I look forward to seeing when I come into work every day. Have you ever seen him puff up? No, I've never seen him puff up. I've heard rumors though that one time a few years ago when he was a little bit smaller, he did kind of stretch out a little bit. Um, and even then they said he was pretty big uh, when he got around. I would imagine now he'd probably be like basketball size. Right. Puffed up, but nothing that I probably will see in my uh, career here. But I would you know, definitely be a lifetime experience to see that. Not necessarily something you want to see. Um, you know, I don't want to see him get scared, but I think that you've definitely seen the belly on him. Like he's definitely been fed today. You can see he's got uh, he's got a food baby. <laughs> All right, Nick. Yeah. That'll be it for today. Alrighty. Thank you so much yeah, for your no help. No problem. Yeah. Absolutely. Hope you watch <laughs> this video too. Yeah, I will. This time I will. <laughs> All right, guys, hope you found that entertaining and educational. And if you have any puffers or any questions about any puffers, uh, let me know down below. See you guys on the next one.